Hey guys, hope you are having an amazing weekend and a fantastic Thanksgiving. As promised, today I want to talk about the stock market and in particular, stagflation. If you didn't catch the last video, a lot of what we are going to talk about branches off from the main points we discussed so if you missed it, I highly highly recommend you go back and watch it. So, that caveat aside, let's begin with the basic definitions and then bring context to what is happening across the world. Stagflation is the combination of high inflation and economic stagnation, a situation that is happening at the very reason why the government is working so hard to lie about the state of the economy. Inflation, as you all know, drives prices up in the worst of ways. In our case, the Fed printed infinite amounts of money during the pandemic and we got in a really tight spot. Russia then decided to invade Ukraine and oil prices shot up and the economy became unstable as prices across every sector began shooting up. The little thing that no one is talking about is the way business drive up inflation. You see, corporations never miss a beat in screwing up the economy. They enjoyed taxpayer-funded loans they didn't have to pay back during the pandemic, then use the guise of inflation as a way to cover up them hiking up prices to drive in more revenue. This time around, because there is so much chaos, it's harder to pinpoint which corporations are raising prices way beyond what they should be to make an extra buck, in particular when everyone else is doing the same. So in the end, it becomes this vicious cycle where instability in global prices for commodities allow corporations to viciously scam people through price hikes that are unwarranted while they blame everything but themselves. All in all, inflation drives prices up in many ways more than the simple gas is just expensive and you get less bang for your buck. The other side of stagflation is stagnation in economic growth. As you all know the saying in business, if it ain't growing, it's dying. Our economy has slowed dramatically and there are substantial and based fears that it could even come to a screeching halt in the near future. When you mixed inflation and stagnation with high unemployment, a drop in GDP, slumping wages and some other factors, you get stagflation. This economic phenomenon is actually very rare, though it has occurred in the past. The best and most recent known example came during the oil crisis in the 1970s. OPEC embargoed oil exports to Western countries that had backed Israel in the Yom Kippur War. It caused a significant set of events that the sides signed a disengagement agreement and OPEC lifted the embargo. This fallout caused several social economic issues like wage freezes and rising unemployment, which then led to purchasing power to fall and then consumption to decline. As I said in my previous video, America runs on a very simple foundation, consumer spending. The moment people stop spending money, things derail faster than lightning and you get a guaranteed recession. Stagflation is a very scary scenario but the moment an economy finds itself in it, there is no recourse it can do to escape a recession. The only way to treat stagflation is to avoid and prevent it, and obviously given that our government is now owned by private interests, avoiding it is not really a pragmatic and reasonable recourse given that Wall Street is willing to use a hurting middle and lower class to exploit it even further than it is, but more on that for another time. To avoid stagflation overall, governments have come to adopt certain economic, fiscal and monetary policies, but these very policies often come into conflict with each other, which makes navigating an escape excruciatingly challenging. Governments need to make sure consumer spending is up and growing year over year, and sometimes the policies that ensure people spend money can often backfire and make inflation even worse. So you might ask yourself if you have been a fan of this channel, Carlos, why are we talking about stagflation again for like the millionth time this year? Well, it's because new data shows that we are spearheaded into a stagflationary economic crisis that could reset America back years, and this include the stock market as well. The question everyone asking is how persistent is inflation and what will it take to get it down? The only way to beat stagflation in terms of avoiding it is by lowering inflation. This is why the news are consistently hampering on the narrative that it isn't as bad as it seems, often undermining the pains from millions of Americans having to juggle between the decision of paying for food or electricity. The best way to judge inflation is by simply taking the statements of Jerome the Joke Powell to heart. As he has said time and again, inflation is persistent and it will hurt businesses and people alike. Where once we mocked it for being declared transitory, inflation is now undeniable viewed as persistent, and the rate hikes have not done much to lower it, albeit they seem to have been able to stop its fast-paced growth. The question then becomes, will monetary policy tightening by the Fed bring a hodged landing, which is fancy words for a recession, or a soft landing, which means growth slowdown without a recession? Obviously, I am team hard landing in the sense that I personally see it as an inevitability at this point, though of course I could be wrong. 
There is still time indeed where the government can maneuver itself out of this predicament, but it would imply a series of almost impossible economic performance changes that is just unimaginable for me to even think about without laughing. Our government has shown itself to be incompetent as every way and I just don't think Congress nor the current administration has the ability to charter itself into a soft landing. Even Jerome Powell, who should be the one selling hope, continually says a soft landing will be very challenging. The Fed and even the Bank of England recently said there is a high probability of a hard landing. We are now seeing Wall Street institutions begin to agree, expressing similar views on it. Jeff Bezos a day or two ago said the same thing, warning Americans to not spend too much money on TVs or other things during Black Friday and to instead hold on to their cash. Guys, when even the multi-billionaire is warning people to not go on a buying frenzy, you know things are bad, I don't think I have to tell you that. However, I would also ask that you try to see this for what it truly is. Bezos and many other hyper-rich billionaires are sounding alarms about imminent doom because they are trying to get people to stop spending to slow the economy without having to raise rates too high. If people slow the economy voluntarily, we could avoid creating a liquidity crisis that would be needed to convince everyone to stop spending and investing. This is why economists advocate for slow steady growth, an opinion I too share, because hyper-growth will have pain follow it no matter what. When stocks begin to rally too hard, it actually makes the Fed's job a lot harder to do. This is why they keep saying it will be a painful and long recovery, because for every long big rally we have, pains will follow it. In the past 60 years, whoever inflation has been above 5%, all the attempts by the Fed have always led to a hard landing. There is a lot of hope that the economy is begin to recover, which is why stocks have recently been making much progress. The bulls point to a positive growth in the third quarter and a lower than expect CPI they pin their hopes that with people going out shopping during the holiday season, it will significantly help bring down inflation and put us on a good path, but I am not as optimistic about this. I think most of the consumer spending we have seen has not been the result of people having money and deciding to finally spend it after saving it all year. I think the prices for food have grown so much that reports will show people are spending more than usual, but it isn't on things like TVs. The real bearer of news will be the next earnings reports which will show just how much Americans really spent buying new phones versus buying food. I think bulls are overestimating the strength of our economy. During the last formal statements, the Fed said that inflation will stay above 2% for years to come, despite a very restrictive rate. The overnight rate will stay above 2.5% for years, and they also mentioned it could be much higher if needed. Then they also said they believe employment and other economic indicators will worsen significantly. The Fed is going to continue hiking until inflation begins to drop like a rock, which I expect to happen during or after summer of 2023. Bulls love to point to numbers but forget to do any of the math. Inflation is hot right now, it's hellfire hot, and because of it, future metrics to anticipate what is to come will be lower because the metrics denominator is bigger and the numerator is small. A big reason the CPI print for October came in low was because the October 20, 21 CPI number was a huge jump from September from 2021. I think the market will rally hard and the number of sales by retail will have a significant effect on the future of stocks. Depending how the stock market performs this holiday season, we will see just how affected families are across America and if we are in a state of economical paralyzation where people are not spending, which could signal a second hard fall in all stocks, or if reports show greater than expected revenue, which would suggest Americans are well off and stocks will further rally. However, even with a rally like that, do not think it means it will not have any consequences. Like I said, the only way out of this mess is with steady slow progress, as any rally in stocks will affect the Fed's ability to contain inflation and further cement our economy into crashing on a hard landing. Again, recapping, the next earnings season will decide where we go the short term but the long term view is still pessimistic. Some data suggests American shopping is increasing and that will be affirmed by the next earnings, which could have a dramatic effect. However, the pains of an economy on the perils of stagflation is without a question the fear the Fed and Wall Street have. There is much argument to be had that we have not reached the bottom yet and that even if we did, recovery will not be quick and easy like we saw in 2020 when stocks plummeted, only to be followed by the biggest rally in stock history. As such, you are now all aware of how the economy is holding up. I will see you all later in the week for more videos. GameStop and AMC are still my most valuable possessions and I look forward to buying more shares in the future. Until the next video, I love you all, thank you for watching to the end and to the moon.